mechanical energy. So it is the sum of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Now, I'm gonna make the assumption, okay, that you have gone into kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. You can put up a link up above there, okay, so for kinetic energy for you. And then after a few seconds, I'll put up another link, okay, with regards to gravitational potential energy. So in studying energy, as you're going through initially in physics, you're gonna be running into, yes, so kinetic energy, which is basically the energy due to motion. You're gonna have gravitational potential energy, okay, which is the actual energy with respect to a particular height relative to a surface. Okay, so that's what you're gonna have. And then you can combine the two. So it turns out that we call the combination, so the sum of the two energies as mechanical energy. So now with this uh, concept of mechanical energy, okay, um, we can actually calculate a few items. It's not very difficult to try to combine the two once you're familiar with kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Now, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. So for example, if you have a surface, okay, and let's say that you are you know, driving, riding, walking, it doesn't matter, so as you're moving along, okay, this particular surface. If the object is, so whatever object that might be, okay, so let's put an object in here. So if the object is actually placed on the surface and it is moving, so if it's moving, then, you know, it's going to have some kind of a velocity, okay, or speed as you're moving along, but it is directly on the surface. So anytime you have an object which is on the surface, so the gravitational potential energy, so this right here, Okay, what you're going to see is, so notice I put an H here, although this is the distance away from a relative surface. Well, if you're right on the surface, then the H is actually always going to be equal to zero, which means you're not gonna have any gravitational potential energy, and therefore your mechanical energy that you have is only going to be solely kinetic energy. So very often as you're walking through, okay, examples with regards to energy, if you notice that you're right on the surface, please keep in mind that there's gonna be no gravitational potential energy relative to that surface, unless you're comparing it to some other surface. So what do we mean by that? Well, so if you take the same object and now all of a sudden, let's say that you start to create a cliff maybe, okay, of some kind, not that I would want you to go off the cliff, but if you'd still have this same object right here, I'm gonna just duplicate it and I'll put it up on top of here. So relative to, this particular okay, surface, there's no gravitational potential energy. However, okay, if you create another surface, okay, so right here, well now all of a sudden you are a certain distance away from that surface, so now you do have gravitational potential energy relative to this surface right here. So if that object is just sitting there and it's not really doing anything, well therefore if you're going back and thinking about mechanical energy, well, if it's just sitting and not doing anything, well, then its speed is obviously going to be zero. So this whole term falls apart. So that means no kinetic energy. And therefore, okay, you only have gravitational potential energy. So that's what you would have over here. Now, if both you are not moving, okay, and you're sitting at a surface, and so let's say if this speed was actually equal to zero, well, then you're not gonna have any of these, and therefore you're not gonna be carrying any mechanical energy. So that is something that you know we should think about. So now what kind of style of problems you might get into? These two that I have just listed are the easier problems. Well, if you're not moving, no kinetic energy. If you're sitting on a surface, no gravitational potential energy. So that's fine. But now all of a sudden, what if I come along and now say, okay, well, now we're gonna take this object, okay? And I'm gonna let it go. And as you know, if you're gonna be letting it go, then all of a sudden, well, gravity is gonna do what it needs to do, okay? And it's going to start to pull this object down. And therefore, so after a certain amount of time, so maybe at time t, okay, is equal to zero. So this is the relative time, and this is kind of, if you're going back into mechanical energy, notice that it is the sum of the energies, but it's at an instant of time. So it's at a particular point in time because it could possibly change, okay, as you're going through. And certainly it would change in here. So at this distance, if you're just holding it right there and it hasn't really started to move, then you're gonna have quite a bit of gravitational potential energy. So whatever the mass of the object is, 
whatever the gravity is, and then whatever this particular height might be. But you're not going to have any kinetic energy because it hasn't started to move. So this is going to be just plain out zero because the speed is zero. But as soon as you let it go, you know, so let's say after some time, now I don't know how, you know, how far this distance might be, but let's say after maybe one second, okay? So what's going to happen after one second, okay, with respect to this particular object? So with respect to this object, well, after one second, we can certainly calculate what the speed is. We are gonna be making assumptions just as you have made assumptions in the kinematic chapter when you were just studying motion then in those cases, you actually were running into this. So you could certainly calculate exactly, okay, what has happened to that object. Now, the only difference is you might be able to figure out what the speed and what the actual movement of that is, okay? So this, you know, you can put a question mark for the moment, but now you will know exactly what this will be from your kinematics, okay? Because in kinematics, your final, okay, which would have been after one second in this case, so as you're going along, so this would start to fall, then this would have been just your initial speed plus, okay, this would have been your acceleration and then multiplied by the change in time. Well, for us, this would have been nothing else but simply zero for your initial speed plus this is gonna be 9.8. Now, you know, you can certainly assume that it's downwards, okay, if you wanted to, but I'll put 9.8 and I'll assume that down is positive this time around. And then, you know, this is after just one second. So as you can see there, it would have been 9.8 meters per second with your speed. And all of a sudden, now you will have kinetic energy because this thing is moving. Now, the other part is, depending on how far this particular surface is, so hopefully, okay, this box hasn't fallen down, okay, in such a way that it's already hit the ground, okay, let's imagine that it's still in motion, and it's moving down, you might ask the question, okay, well, I will have some kinetic energy. It's no longer going to be zero because I am moving. So that's great, okay? So that kinetic energy that I would have at that point in time would be one half if we know the mass, okay, of the box, and then we would wanna know what the speed is, okay? So that would have been our kinetic energy. For simplicity, let's make an assumption here, and we'll make it an uh, assumption that we have a, a nice little box Okay, and this box maybe is one kilogram. So in that case, if I would substitute this all back in, so one kilogram, this would have been 9.8. Now notice it's going to be squared. Take out the calculator here. So what I would have is, so one half, so 0 0.5 times one times 9.8 squared. And I would have had approximately, let's imagine 48, joules of energy for this box. And that was all due to the box moving. Now, this, okay, is fine for kinetic energy. Now for mechanical energy, as you would be walking along, all of a sudden now you would also have to start to think, hmm, is there any gravitational potential energy relative to a surface? Now, we would have to know what this height might be. Well, let's, you know, let's imagine it's maybe like something like 25 meters, okay? in terms of the height. And now as this box is going to be falling, so as it kind of falls through, so this thing, okay, eventually it's it's going to just start to fall in here. So let's take this box, you know, bring it down ever so slightly. So now the question is, okay, so how far is this box all of a sudden away from the surface? So this particular surface that it would be. It won't be 25 meters anymore that would have been maybe its initial, right? So at this time equals to zero, so sure, we could now calculate what this was right there because the, if mass is one kilogram, gravity is 9.8, and the h is 25 meters, we can certainly figure out what the actual amount of energy is, right? So I can go back in there and then I can substitute it in here. So that's, let's do that just for the sake of completeness. So this would have been your mass, which is one, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by the height, and that would have been 245. So this is 245 joules. I'm gonna maybe stop the, the rounding there. I'll just leave it as it is, okay, right there. But now after one second, this thing has fallen down. Now we know, we can certainly figure out 
what the displacement here was, so between the initial and the current, because we do know everything with respect to the actual numbers. So initially, so this would have been V initial multiplied by the change in time. Well, V initial is zero, okay, we started at zero. Maybe you start with something else, but in this case, let's assume that it was zero. Plus, and this is gonna be one half, and then it's gonna be 9.8, which is going to be your acceleration, and then it's gonna be your delta T, okay, that you have in here squared. So that's what we actually need. So let's, let's move that up there. And that would have been after one second. So it's a very simple calculation in here. And what we see here is we know how much we have fallen down. So within here, so these numbers are relatively simple, simple it would have been about 4.9 meters. Now, this is not the height, right? So this is the actually how much you have fallen off. So if you wanted to know what this height is, so this particular height, that would have been 25 meters minus whatever it has fallen, so 4.9 or approximately five meters, and you would have known exactly what this is. So this would have been about 20, I guess, 0.1 meters in terms of the height. And now you can certainly calculate, so you can go back and you can say, well, okay, well, my gravitational potential energy now is, so the mass is one kilogram, my gravity doesn't change. My only distance, that's the only thing that has changed in here. And now all of a sudden, you know, I can bring this up and I will get, so 9.8, because the one won't do anything for us. And then all of a sudden, so I have approximately, you know, 197 joules. So this is what I have in between, okay, the two. And your mechanical energy, so as you would have it, is the summation of the two. So you would have to take your kinetic energy that you have, which is approximately 48, plus your gravitational potential energy, and then you can add them up together. Now, notice 48 plus 197, okay, and it's gonna be 245 joules. That is the total amount that you have. Now, I hope that you have noticed something. You would be like, hmm, well, that's interesting. Notice that this is 245. And here, okay, this was 245. Now, if I added these two at the top, they would have been zero plus 245 is 245. So it looks like your actual mechanical energy has not changed. Now, this is under a very special assumption. We're neglecting the air resistance, right? So any frictions that we have as we're falling through. Because if we do have those, then in those particular cases, that friction would have to be taken into account. Okay? And the actual um, sum of the energy, okay, mechanical energy would dissipate okay, due to the actual friction. Now, in your introductory physics classes, you're not going to have those particular frictions okay, in the beginning, where you're going to just simply assume that let's neglect the air resistance and let's calculate these actual mechanical energies. So there you have it. So this is an introduction to mechanical energy and it always, okay, so for you, just keep in mind, it is nothing else but simply the summation between your kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. And as you're working through this, you know, in a probably a future video, you're gonna get to the law of conservation and you're gonna notice that your total mechanical energy, if you do start to neglect and of all of those resistances that you have or your frictions, okay, it's always gonna be constant. And that's gonna be an important topic for you to think about. All right, so that is it for this video. So I hope that it gives you a sense, okay, I gave you a little short example um, on how to calculate, okay, the two. Um, most of the time, the summation, okay, will be just simply the problem of finding kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy because mechanical energy is just the addition of the two. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.